Alright, so now it's time to look at 11.2 and talk about permutations. And with permutations, what we're going to do is use the fundamental counting principle to help us find things that do not require an order. So we're going to have a few objectives for this video. We're going to be able to use the fundamental counting principle to count permutations. All right. We're going to evaluate the factorial expression, so we're going to introduce a new uh, mathematical notation. We're going to use the permutations formula, so I'm going to introduce a formula. And then we're going to find the number of permutations of duplicate items, right? So when something occurs twice, um, you don't have a unique order, and so what do we do with that? All right, so <clears throat> let's first go ahead and define what a permutation is okay so a permutation is an ordered arrangement of items that occurs when no item is used more than once and when it is we have to take that into account and the order of the arrangement makes a difference there is a huge difference uh, like in a NASCAR race who comes in first second third fourth right um, points, payouts, all of those things. So when you have a rank ordering, then what you're talking about is a permutation, okay? Um, if you don't believe me, just ask Hillary Clinton, right? Uh, president Obama and uh, Hillary Clinton were looking to uh, become president of the United States and she came in second and became Secretary of State. So President Obama had the rank of president and she had Secretary of State. And I don't think she would consider those to be um, the same. I think she would say that that makes a, a difference. All right. <clears throat> so that's when you have a permutation. Okay, so how am I going to use this with the counting principle? All right, well, let's. Oh no! Gotta... Here's our example number one. <clears throat> you need to arrange seven of your favorite books along a small shelf. How many different ways can you arrange the books, assuming that the order of the books makes a difference to you? Let's say you want alphabetical order, or by genre, or chronological order or even by colors of the rainbow according to their spine or the Dewey Decimal System. Let's say it makes a difference. Maybe you're rank ordering the books. How many different ways could you order the books using some system where it makes a difference? Well, let's think about the fundamental counting principle. You have seven books that you're picking from, okay? So if you have seven books that you're picking from, you're going to pick one out of the seven books. So you have seven, right? Now let's think. Well, if you've already picked a book, and now you're going to pick another book out of the stack and put it second, well, now you only have six books to pick from for the second spot. And once you've picked that second book, then you only have five books for the third spot, four books, then two, three books, then two books, and then there's only one book left over in the stack that you can pick from. So you can see that a permutation is very much then like a counting principle, right? Where I'm picking one and I'm multiplying together what is uh, the other options. Now this idea of going by seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, going down by integer values and multiplying them together, this is our definition of the factorial, okay? And when you take seven factorial in your calculator, you do get 5,040 ways. So there are di literally 5,040 different ways that you can organize seven books. So permutations get really big really quickly. Um, it does not take very many items to have a very large uh, count of ways of ordering them. Okay? So that brings us to the factorial notation. Okay? So just like I said, the 7654321 is called uh, the 7 factorial and is written with the explanation point. And the definition is, if n is a positive integer, the notation n with the explanation point, which is red factorial, n factorial, is the product of all positive integers from n down through 1. Okay, so if this is 16, you're going to multiply 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times blah, 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 3, 2, 1. Okay? 
and then just by definition the zero factorial is um, 1. This makes all of our other math work. I know it seems kind of weird, but uh, just think of it as like, remember x to the zero power is also 1, so just think of zero factorial being 1, because 1 is the multiplicative, multiplicative identity, identity, okay? Um, and so because we have a multiplication going on with the factorial, um, we want zero factorial to give us the multiplicative identity and not zero, which is sort of the additive identity, okay? Now that brings us to some use with the factorial notation. This is going to be really helpful. Sorry, sorry, I forgot to delete it, okay? This is going to be really helpful in the future. Now your calculator can handle 8 factorial over 5 factorial, but there are some that it can't handle. So how would I simplify this? Well, the idea is to turn 8 factorial into something that looks like 5 factorial so you can reduce it. And how do I do that? Well, I go 8, 7, 6, oh, 5, and put the factorials there. And then you can see that 5 factorial over 5 factorial will reduce to a 1 and simply leave you the 876 and you can multiply that out and get 336. The same thing happens here. Your calculator, I don't know. Um, the calculators have a lot more memory nowadays. Uh, your computer certainly does. But when the factorials start to get really big, you can get overflow error. So being able to reduce these sometimes is really important. So if you have 26 factorial over 21 factorial, again the idea is to write out 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, oh, there's the 21, throw the factorial on the end so that I can reduce those and just be left with the 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, and that's going to give me almost 8 million. Now look at that, right? I mean, just multiplying those numbers together, this very small factorial gives you 8 million options. That's a lot of options, okay? So that makes us very happy. Well, the, the explanation point is, wow, that's a lot, okay? So there we go. Now, there's a formula for the permutation that actually uses the factorial, okay? So what is that? The formula for the factorial is the number of possible permutations of R items, how many items I'm picking, taken from n items, the total number of items, okay? So the n here is the total number, and the r here is the picked number, okay? Obviously when you pick them all, right? In the case of the seven books, I had seven factorial over seven minus seven is zero, and the zero factorial now you can see that, right? So here's my, I'm going to put a little example over here, right? Of the seven books. And we picked all seven of them, right? So my n is going to be seven, and the number that I picked is going to be seven. And so I'm going to have seven factorial all over seven minus seven factorial. Well, the seven minus seven factorial is zero. And so it's a really good thing that the zero factorial is simply one and not zero, because then I'd have a division by zero and this whole formula would break down and that would make me very sad, okay, or very angry, and I got steam coming off of my head, okay. Okay, that doesn't look angry, but he's angry, all right. So this is the, uh, this is the idea here, all right. So now let's use this where we don't pick all of the items like we did in the book, okay? So let's use example number four, all right? And the idea here is you and 19 of your friends have decided to form a business. The group needs to choose uh, three officers, a CEO, an operating manager, and a treasurer. And how many ways can those offices be filled, okay? Well, assuming that you're not gonna be part of this, well, you are, right? So let's go ahead and do this, right? You're going to have uh, 20 people that you're going to pick from for the CEO. Once you pick the CEO, you're going to have 
19 people that you're going to pick from for the operating manager. Once you pick the operating manager, you're going to have 18 people to pick for the treasurer. Okay? So that's a lot of people. Now, what we could have done is we could have said, oh, look, this is 20. This is a permutation because the rank matters. The CEO, the operating manager, and the treasurer all have different options. I'm going to pick three from it. And so that's going to give me 20 factorial <clears throat> all over 20 minus 3 factorial, which is going to give me 20 factorial over 17 factorial. And you can see that once you get rid of the 17, all that will be left is the 20, the 19, and the 18, right? So you plug that into your calculator, and you get a wonderful answer. <clears throat> um, let's see. What's 19? All right. Well, you can figure that out. All right. That's a, you try this. Okay. Now, what happens if I have something a little bit different? Okay. What if, what if I have to figure out how many distinct ways I can write the letters of the word Mississippi? And I go, well, wait a minute. This S and this S are the same. So if I start going M-I-S, is that the third letter or the fourth letter? Does it make a difference? And I'm thinking, oh, now I'm sad because I have these repeated letters. And let's go ahead and use the, the uh, vocabulary from chapter 3 from our sets and talk about not just repeated letters but repeated elements okay the repeated elements of the set if you have repeated elements from the set you can't just um, use the permutation formula you gotta tweak it in a slight way alright so how are we gonna tweak it well the idea is that permutations of duplicate items require the P items that are identical go on the bottom as a factorial. Why are they going on the bottom? They're going on the bottom because they're going to divide out of the total number of possible options. Think about that. If I had a thousand options up here and I had two letters that were the same, well, those two letters could go in either of the spots of the thousand. And so really you would only have like 500 options because of the doubling of the letters. So that's the idea here. And if I have four I's in Mississippi, those four I's are going to show up in different places in the possible options and so those have to be divided out and it turns out that using the number of duplicates factorial times the number of duplicates factorial and on and on for however many duplicates you have is the proper way of handling this okay so <clears throat> I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 letters in Mississippi so I have 11 letters all together. All right, so that's what's going to go on the top. My 11 factorial is going to go on the top. Now, M is not repeated, but I shows up four times. So I have four I's, right? So that's going to be a four factorial on the bottom. I have four S's. So that's repeated, so I'm going to have 4 factorial on the bottom again. And I have 2 P's. So with those 2 P's, I have to divide those out and get half the number that I might have had. All right. Now, you could do this a couple of different ways of simplifying this. Um, but I think that as long as you use parentheses in the denominator, you are good to go for dividing this in your calculator. And uh, you should do that now because the answer you should get should be 34,650. Now again, because it's 11 letters, even though I have a bunch of duplicates, I still end up with a huge number of possibilities. And that's because of the factorial. The, the way that the factorial grows is huge. And so you get a big number and that's not uncommon. All right, well that completes our factorial. That makes us very happy on our permutations. Uh, now we're going to start talking about combinations and the differences between them in the next video.